morning traders welcome to your seven minute market update utilizing technical analysis to predict direction based on human emotion today is november 3rd 2012 lots to talk about so let's get crack a lacking all right so this is the spy which is the etf that tracks the s p 500 and yes it is another early morning for me but again i'm trying to get these videos out to you guys as soon as possible and there was a lot of eh, kind of a lot of action uh, this past week but not unexpected action okay so I'm gonna just gonna do a quick recap of uh, what we discussed last week all right so I know you guys see a lot of lines here um, you know what let me just uh, delete these lines and I'll be right back just so it's easier to understand in case uh, any newcomers are watching this video okay I'll be right back all right there we go that looks much better so just so I don't make this video way too long like I normally do I'm just gonna run through this as quick as possible if you choose to watch the previous video then by all means please do it, it probably will help you understand a little bit more of what I'm doing alright so we had this uh, rising wedge pattern here and then we got our expected results by getting the um, closest to the middle of the pivot point or of a pivot point and we got our expected um, downfall or breakdown right there almost tag almost tagging the breakdown of the 140 area here but this will still be pretty good support okay so let me just delete this line here and delete this line here okay so with that said we also had this bottom trend line over here that held pretty good for support in an intraday uh, on an intraday basis and then I did explain that it didn't happen on um, good volume which is why we cannot trust a reversal even though it did turn out to be somewhat of a hammer candle there's a couple of things that we needed uh, or I should say I should take a step back here and say I needed to uh, analyze and say well and if you guys have been watching my videos you guys would know you know if the volume isn't there and it wasn't uh, higher than at least the past three days then I probably won't take the trade not because it won't do it but because the odds are not going to be in my favor as much as if it were uh, on higher volume and it was at least higher than the past three days right we also had this uh, upper trend line here uh, in which case we had one so we had this first one we had the second one and then that's of course all you need to make a trend line is two pivots and then of course we had this third one on a nice doji candle on higher volume and again this volume was higher than the past three days so obviously i would have taken the short um because um, not only did it touch that trend line, but it also touched this trend line over here. So that was multiple, multiple, multiple factors uh, saying that it's probably going to pull back, and it sure did. It came down and it broke down from this bottom trend line over here, okay? Right? And then we retested it a couple of times. Uh, created this uh, doji candle, and then we did discuss, about, uh, discuss this doji candle um, previous, uh, I think it was last week. I think this was Friday, uh, October 26th. Let me just check. Yep, sure enough, this was Friday, and I did say, well, this is a possibility that we could get a reversal here. I still have a target of 139.21, but we could still have a reversal here simply because the volume uh, was not substantially higher, but it was higher, and it did create this doji candle. But because we are under this uh, bottom trend line here, and because of these two moving averages here, I mean, you can just look at the previous video that I made here. I did state that if it does go up, it's not going to go very high. In fact, um, I didn't think it would pass this 144.30. Now there is still a possibility because of the elections that they push this thing higher. That I can't, you know, that's not an impossible thing. So you know, with the stock markets, you have to trade what the markets do, not what you think it's going to do. Because the markets aren't going to do what you want it to do. It's just going to do what it's going to do, and that's why we use uh, obviously charting uh, to see what the general population is thinking this is basically human emotion right here we are trying to figure out using charts uh, what the next move is going to be right and that'll be based on the three human emotions which is greed hope and fear right so if there's a lot of fear in the markets the markets are going to go down and then if there's a lot of hope it's going to go up and if there's a lot of greed that's also going to go up as well but fear out of the three is probably going to be the strongest of the three and that's why when markets go down it's harder for it to go up you know just wanted to put that out there but you know keep in mind again the elections are happening I believe on uh, on Tuesday and let me just verify that yes on Tuesday we'll have the elections. so you know we had this big move down yes in my opinion okay this is considered an engulfing pattern all right a lot of people are saying well what kind of pattern is this well this is an engulfing pattern because we had one two three days of uh, up up move right 
of a up move I should say I'm sorry and then we have this uh, down day on Friday which engulfs the previous uh, day's candle now I am not as strict as uh, a lot of people uh, a lot of other people are with their engulfing patterns in which uh, this whole body engulf needs to engulf the whole uh, uh, previous day's candle uh, including the tails I'm not as strict as that as long as this body on Friday engulfs uh, the body of the previous day um, that's an engulfing pattern in my opinion okay but here's the catch on this day here we had 146 million uh, traded and then um, on Friday we had 137 million traded now normally Fridays are low volume days but again the markets were closed from Monday and Tuesday so we only had three days of uh, trading so normally um, the markets would be uh, you know a little bit more settled on Friday I should say and so we didn't get the volume that I would have liked to see all right now we got the volume right so the, the volume is higher than the past two days but you guys know me from um, watching previous videos I need at least three days uh, of higher volume so if the volume was uh, maybe up here if it got up here or anything above 146 maybe 160 million you know 146 to 150 would be a little bit uh, too close to me but maybe 160 million would have been uh, would have been perfect and then you know I would have definitely said okay we have more downside to come right now it does still look bearish but I wouldn't take a trade off with this I would have taken a trade here at these two moving averages however right rent once it got into these two moving averages it would have been uh, a good trade to take a good short and then um, a stop would be right above this 144.30 level or if you wanted to be more risky uh, the stop your stop would have been any close above this upper trend line here right but um, you know I missed this trade because I was a little bit more cautious because I wanted to see it at least get into this 144.30 level take a short trade and then wait my stop out would have been above this trend line here because if it did break out of this trend line and confirmed uh, confirmed meaning uh, the next day it closed higher than the previous day then I would have taken a stop out over there so this would have been a good trade for me I didn't think um, you know I thought that there was a possibility that we could at least get to the 144.30 before taking a short so yeah, like I said, you know, I'm not making any money off these videos, so uh, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say, oh yeah, I make up excuses. I didn't take this trade. I, I'm, you know, that's just the bottom line. Now let's analyze what happened on Friday. So we had this bottom trend line over here, and then we did, we did uh, close below this bottom trend line. But now keep in mind, because we this is now considered a pivot, it's an ugly pivot because it came from a consolidation pattern. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? We came down right and we closed below this bottom trend line here but remember anytime you break down or break above or break out I should say of any type of trend line a trend line that is solid such as this one here and this one up here you would need the next day to close below uh, in this case you would need the next day to close below the previous day's candle so what does that mean well we did not we were unable to close below this candle here which is um, the the technical breakdown of this bottom trend line here you see that so we broke down here we came up and we closed right here okay we broke down here and then we we uh, we continued down well we, we gapped up and then we continued down and we closed right here it wasn't below um, the low of this uh, day here and then the same for the next day and the same for the next day I mean we did trade lower than the previous uh, trade lower than this day but we were unable to close lower than this day you see how that works which which means basically this because we broke back above this bottom trend line here it kind of like resets it okay so now we broke down again now we need to close below this um, bottom candle here to even have me consider uh, I mean close below the low of Friday's candle for me to even consider that we're gonna possibly uh, retest this bottom trend line here and if we do retest it maybe in a, we'll get an intraday bounce in fact I'm pretty sure we would or should get an intraday bounce but then what I would need to see is another close below this candle here because this is the pivot candle okay we close below two times so here let me just give you an example I know I'm all over the place a lot of times and today might be um, no exception right so 
we closed here on Friday, right? So let's just say blah blah blah. We keep trading, we keep trading, okay? And then all of a sudden, one day we close, say around here. This is lower than this pivot candle here. This is the pivotal candle. This is the doji candle. This is what reversed, okay? And this is considered a reversal. I don't think it's a strong reversal. Again, it's because we consolidated uh, first before creating this doji candle. What I have would have liked to see uh, in a pivot is a straight down movement pivot doji and then boom up to me that's a stronger pivot than these types of consolidations first and then you create a doji and then we head higher so this isn't a very strong pivot which is why I'm saying intraday will probably get a bounce here not maybe not multiple days okay so anyways let me just draw a line here so we trade down you know going back to where I was going again because I'm all scatterbrained right and then we close below the low of this pivotal candle here what I would need to see is another close below that candle and then I can say all right um, our target level is going to be 139.21, but it'll be already close to it. So we may have, uh, you know, once we close below this uh, pivot point here, we may actually already tag down 139.21. Now, again, these mathematically calculated levels, if you're new to this channel, um, nobody else has this. This is a mathematically calculation or mathematical calculation that I had invented myself and um, discovered last year in December. Okay, so it wasn't uh, too long ago. It's uh, almost a year old. And since that time, if you've been following these videos from day one, it's just been migrating into this, you know, this, uh, this you know, every time I try to improve on the mathematical calculation, there's a basic set of numbers that I use uh, in the calculation and just started getting more and more and more advanced with more and more and more calculations all you know grouping into this one calculation here that's been working out pretty well it doesn't work all the time okay nothing's 100 percent but it has been working very well as of late or since december of last year if you've been following these videos now the way these uh lines work again is if you hit the line um you know if you tag the line like over here for example or over here or even down here you know um they it's, it's like it doesn't mean it's going to get to the line just because the line is there it means that if it does get to the line then there's a good chance that you'll either get a pullback or a bounce off of it depending what direction it's going okay so I just want to make that clear and the bounce should be either intraday uh, multiple days depending on the market and or a gap okay so you can check previous videos the pretty previous videos that I've made and I've uh, explained it in detail on how to read these um, these lines here and I am still working on more calculations trust me I want to get this as uh, perfect as I possibly can because you know I'm playing for money as well just like everybody else all right so Back to uh, the SPY because, uh, wow, I'm already into 12 minutes. I have this 137.51 uh, level down here. Just keep in mind that we do have the 200 moving average over here, but that doesn't mean anything. These these mathematically calculated levels, if I was to take a trade, uh, I would take it at 137.51 if it can get there. If it gets to 137.51, I'm pretty sure uh, we'll get a pretty solid bounce off of this level here. Okay, the 139.21 should have a pretty good bounce as well. Um, and, you know, it's not too far away right now at 141.56. So 139, you know, that's like a dollar, two dollars, two dollars away. Now, because the elections are coming up on Tuesday, I'm not even sure we're going to have a very big moves. Okay, and it, there, there is a possibility that the feds will push this thing higher. So don't think that this thing is just going to start tanking. I mean, it could. Uh, but just based off the rules that I have, which means any type of reversal pattern such as this one, uh, after ex an extensive move such as this one, I would have taken the trade. But this is only, you know, this is my minimum. My minimum is three days. I got that three days. We got this uh, reversal candle. We do have higher volume, but the volume was not higher than the past three days. So just keep that in mind. And we do have elections coming up. So it's very easy for the feds uh, to prop this market higher by dumping billions of money uh, by... Um, you know uh, selling off the dollar okay so just keep that in mind so what do I think because um, I may be contradicting myself I'm just gonna make it clear right now right now it is uh, a bearish uh, it's more bearish than it is bullish with the stipulation that you have to realize that we do have elections on Tuesday so until that happens until Tuesday is done um, you know we'll, we'll have to see how the market reacts after uh, we see who gets elected okay so just keep on keep that in mind but as far as technical analysis goes we still have this 144.30 and this upper trend line these two sections up here that we could have potential upside movement too okay but if I had to put the odds in which side the odds are bearish than it is bullish short term okay and um, 
again we have you know this 147.05 level and we have this 137.51 uh, level we're pretty much right in the middle between these two levels here and we're also pretty much in the le uh, in between the 144.30 and the 139.21 so what does that mean it means we could go either way but whichever way we go um, again I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to be more bearish than I am bullish simply because of that's what the charts are saying uh, I can't trade what I uh, think I have to trade what I see obviously right so what I think is we may actually this this might be a fake out but uh, what I'm seeing is on, t on a technical basis uh, this is more bearish than it is bullish and we do have more downside uh, to come um, and then again we'll, we, we will have uh, some short-term um, support over there and then we have support here and then this one is when I'm gonna take a multi-day uh, long position okay if we even get there all right moving on okay what I'm gonna do is load my drawings in here these are the same drawings that you guys been seeing all right now you may be wondering what this line is here this line here is some same calculated line that I got from um, uh, these this rising triangle here this ascending triangle here except this is uh, now a wedge pattern so if I pull this line out over here you can see that this also held as support so if because that held as support it is a valid trend line in my opinion and therefore I am able to use this line as a calculation uh, for some uh, potential downside movement now keep in mind that uh, again channels using this Meth method uh, channels don't work as well as uh, tr the triangles do okay so the triangles worked very well which is why we came very very uh, very close to this uh, level here uh, so that prediction was pretty accurate in my opinion all right so I take this out I'll take that out and then now what we see is the breakdown level from here on this bottom trend line here and we end up right at this 137.51 level we end up right at this 200 moving average on that day uh, obviously the 200 moving average is gonna um, either kind of flatten out or move a little bit higher but this is why I say that the 137.51 is a potential uh, area for a good um, long trade okay now last but not least this is the weekly chart of the SPY uh, I'm gonna kind of stretch it a little bit here uh, we have a pivot point down here in uh, 2009 that I'm just gonna grab with a Fibonacci retracement and I'm gonna take it up to the high and what we have is a 382 retracement level right at the uh, one um, right at the uh, 129 level okay so uh, let me just remove that and you can see I have this 129 92 level all the way over here that is a mathematically calculated level uh, that was done or calculated on this day here which was uh, or this week of 9 September 3rd okay so this was a while ago that I calculated this level this level here is still in play all right so although I think we'll get a bounce on the 137.51 level just keep in mind 139.92 uh, you know if there's something big news comes out or, or something like you know some crazy something happens uh, we, we could crash and if we crash uh, I will take a long trade on 129.92 so just keep that in mind if we don't crash and nothing crazy happens 137.51 I'm taking a long uh, something bad happens 129.92 all right now let me just delete all these lines because this is the weekly chart of the SPY and um, <clears throat> let me reload it actually as you can see the 137.51 does not look uh, so bad uh, when you look at the weekly chart let me just take these lines out here um, is it's not too far away I mean if you if you think about it it's not a big deal for this to hit to 139.21 or for this to come down into the 137.51 is not unheard of based on this pattern here you know it, it, there is a possibility for it um, but right now it's not a probability okay so so just keep that in mind all right I'm just gonna start ripping through everything else because the SPY is pretty much the most important part but second to the most important part is the US dollar this is the chart of the US dollar futures and we did discuss multiple times on how this uh, play would play out uh, let me just switch back to the daily here all right so we've been um, tagging this uh, upper trend line here for a while we got the bounce off the 78 74 calculated level we went right into the uh, lower trend line here and this trend line was grabbed from these two pivot points as you can see from here okay um, and then uh, let me just take this line out over here I'll show that to you later from this pivot point to this pivot point you create a trend line right um, and then now we get a bounce here uh, I'm sorry a pullback a pullback and another pullback and I'll bounce off of the uh, 78 uh, 74 calculated level we went on Friday right into this uh, 200 moving average and it had an intraday pullback now again 
I had this uh, calculator here level here at 8126 what I'm saying is there is a possibility that the dollar can get to the 8126 if if we can close above now here's the thing we ha we closed above this bottom this upper uh, resistance trend line here right so normally I would say okay the next day we would need to see a close above the previous day's candle which is pretty much what you would be thinking right to just to kind of validate that this move uh, is valid here's the thing though the 200 moving average is right there right you can see that right let me just zoom in over here the 200 moving average is right here so if we just close right above the 200 moving average well to validate that the that the 200 moving average is is going to be a breakthrough of the 200 moving average then we would need another day to close above that day so what is what am i saying what i'm saying is this is going to be uh, some pretty good resistance on the US dollar which means if we do pull back uh, off this 200 moving average on Monday then we should see uh, the markets um, catch a little bit of a bid uh, I don't know if it's gonna um, you know uh, make up for what happened on Friday but uh, you know that is a possibility because we are right into the 200 moving average so what am I what am I saying Tuesday we'll, so if we go higher Let's just say we close higher on the U.S. dollar on Monday. Okay, what I mean by close higher is closing higher uh, than the than Friday's high. Okay, and then Tuesday we close higher than Monday's high, and then bam, 81.26 is in the cars, and therefore I believe that the markets will continue down all the way into that 137 uh, level. In which case I'll turn turn my trade around and go long because I'm currently short the market. I've been short the market since I since I told you guys I've been short the market and that hasn't changed uh, even though I'm only making weekly videos now okay now again just like the opposite if we do not close above the high of this candle here and say we close below this uh, bottom trend line then guess what this breakout is false and um, you know that that's uh, that's not something that we can look at right now okay Keep in mind that even though we do close below this bottom trend line here, we will have these two moving averages right under it. So if we do close um, or we do come back down, uh, it's not going to be long lived. And uh, there is a potential that we could potentially one day break out and validate the breakout of this upper trend line over here. OK, so just keep that in mind. Watch the dollar, because as we all know, the dollar is going to be inverse to the actual market. Um, one thing to consider, though, on the US dollar, this volume was higher than cheese a long long time which means this move here is a good move it's a valid move anytime you get a breakout or a breakdown of any type of pattern you need to do it on volume when you do it on volume then that pretty much tells you or puts the odds in your favor that that breakout is a legitimate breakout it's the breakouts that happen on low volume that you have to watch out for okay which is why I talk about more which I, which is why I talk more about um, being able to validate it the next day okay so once we validate it we would have to validate it again on Tuesday uh, to make sure that we can get up into this 8126 26 level in which case I'll turn it around and go along the market all right let's start talking about the big boys here the iPad mini man and the I guess uh, the guys in charge of the iPhone and stuff uh, resigned from Apple in any case who cares right uh, technical analysis will tell all right so um, anyways we have this uh, rising wedge pattern over here, closest to the pivot, uh, pivot, uh, pivot point. Uh, we get our calculation of from the breakdown. We've actually met that breakdown here, which was pretty good support. We got a bounce off of this support level. Okay. Um, we also had this uh, calculated level at one uh, six seventy two uh, ninety, but you know we didn't quite get there, unfortunately. Again, these levels only work if it can get there, right? Um, so anyways we continue to break down we went right into the 200 200 moving average let me just zoom in here we went right into the 200 moving average and we got an intraday bounce and a next day bounce which is pretty good because the low is low of this candle if you had taken it at the 200 moving average was 587.70 the high of this candle was uh, 603 so uh, that was a pretty good um, uh, intraday or multi-day bounce or two-day bounce and then we just broke down right this all happened last week. We only we could only trade for a little while. Plus, so you know, we had the uh, hurricane and and whatnot. And you know, my heart goes out to all those families out there uh, that has to uh, suffer through all that. And um, you know, I just can't imagine what I would go through if uh, that happened to in, in my area. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely my heart goes out to them. Um, 
in any, in any case, we break down from this 200 moving average. Just keep in mind that, again, just like the uh, SPY, anytime you have a breakdown or a breakout, you're going to need to validate it uh, with a next day closing below that candle there. But because, okay, keep this in mind, because we have a pivot point here, which should be pretty good support, we may get at least an intraday, uh, we, we should get at least an intraday bounce off of this, uh, uh, this pivot point here. So if that's the case, we may not be able to confirm the next day, in which case we would have to wait uh, till Tuesday to see if it'll continue to break down. Now I do have a calculated level here at 5.11.38. This has been here since uh, this day here, which is uh, uh, October 11th, okay? And then we're also gonna have some support here uh, at this bottom trend, at this bottom pivot point. Let me just get uh, more close there. So around this area here, we're gonna have pretty good support. And uh, let me just show you something else here that's kind of interesting. All right, so this is the weekly chart of Apple. I'm not a big, um, I'm not a big Fibonacci retracement fan, to be honest. I don't use it as one of my primary um, tools, um, but I do like to use it to validate certain things. You know, if I'm unsure about something, then I kind of bust out this to tool to uh, to see if uh, you know it has any validation but in any case if I go all the way back to 2009 um, you know this the, the low in 2009 and I just uh, you know bring up Fibonacci retracements all the way up to the high we have a 382 level right at this 511.38 level so this 511.38 level I think should have uh, some pretty good significance if Apple can get there now we've, we've been this is the weekly chart we've been just you know uh, flying or, or punching through uh, just just coming straight down so again if this is the weekly chart if we can come straight down into the 511.38 level that is definitely a place where I'll be interested in taking a long position on Apple okay now if you can't afford Apple like myself I may consider doing a different uh, different kind of trade like maybe trading the queues for example and that's because um, you know uh, Apple weighs heavy on the queues right we all know that so let me load my drawings here here in here if this isn't already it all right so for the cues we had this uh, calculated level here this is from the um, from the head and shoulders pattern right so you take the top of the head uh, down to the neckline take it to the breakout level or breakdown I should say and this is the uh, this is the level of expectation of where you would uh, expect uh, price to go on the queues and then it made sense because even with that even with the 200 moving average and this is what I love about these calculations I had a 64 58 uh, mathematically calculated level here and it just kind of went right into it before we got a bounce on the queues okay now the queues came close to the 66 38 level and it had a nice pullback and that's off of Apple right now on the queues we did have uh, we did uh, create this uh, just like the SPY this uh, engulfing pattern uh, but it wasn't uh, as good it wasn't higher than the past three days which tells me it's not a solid move uh, yeah it could continue down because it is a, a bearish move but it, to me again I have rules and these rules mean it needs any type of move needs to do needs to do it on higher volume and the volume needs to be higher than the past three days and any any pivot point needs to have at least three days worth of upside and not come off of a consolidation pattern now if you look at the cues this is not a consolidation pattern we came we came straight down we created this hammer candle right into the 6458 level and then we got that bounce okay so this is literally a bounce but I need three days I mean I got this one two three you know maybe another day before we had this pullback would have been perfect meaning say we got into this level here or we even got into 6638 level then yeah I would have been much uh, more um, much more inclined to take an, uh, a short trade but I'm already short the market so it doesn't really matter to me um, and I have my break even stop which is way way um, way higher so um, you know I shouldn't be stopping out for a break even in a long time for a long time in fact what I'll probably do is put a in the money stop at this uh, at this point in time all right so the that's your seven minute market update this is your weekly update it's already about half an hour I don't want to go too long um, you know I'm two minutes uh, less than last week which is good again you know I do appreciate you guys taking out the time in a uh, time out of your day to uh, look at my videos 
um, you know, and uh, good luck to you all in, in your trading next week. God bless you, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And remember, um, if you want video updates, um, feel free to subscribe. Again, I'm not making m any money off of this uh, after I discovered this uh, calculation here, and I see uh, after I found out how many people are actually losing money to these manipulative uh, institutions that like to control the markets just uh, to suck money out for uh, new traders. Um, you know, it makes me feel bad and I hope that uh, these videos help you. And if they are helping you and you are making money off of it, you know, uh, all I ask, I mean, I'm not asking for a donation or anything like that. All I ask is to return the favor, uh, give somebody else the information, pass this video on to other people if you want to, um, or help people out there, you know, give a dollar to someone who's, uh, you know, on the streets uh, looking for money or looking for shelter, um, you know, buy, buy a burger for somebody who's hungry. Um, you know hold the door open for somebody it doesn't matter just do something um you know nice and uh you know i'll keep making these videos as, as long as that happens um you know and again thank you very much and uh hope to see you in the next video